Okay then gang, so now we've got the bare bones of this website sorted, we can switch between these two different components. Now we want to start using asynchronous data, so start making requests to this API right here, the Star Wars API, to add some data to our different components. Now we're going to use the React Query library to manage our asynchronous data. In particular, in this lesson, we're going to use a hook from that library called Use Query. So the first thing we need to do is import that hook in one of our components. I'm starting with the planets component. And remember, we already installed the React Query library in the first tutorial of this series. So let us now import something from that library, use query from React Query. So this is a hook that we're going to use to manage our asynchronous data. So let's set this up down here. First of all, I'm going to say const, and we're going to destructure a couple of different properties from this later on. For now, I'll leave that blank, but we'll set it equal to use query. And inside this hook, we need to pass in two arguments. The first argument is going to be a key for this query, so a descriptive name, and it's going to be a string for now. So I'm going to call that planets. You can call it what you will. I'm calling it planets because we're going to go and fetch some planet data. The second argument is going to be a function, an asynchronous function, to go and grab that data. So I'm going to call this fetch planets, but again, call it what you will. So now we need to make this function to go out and grab the data. So I'm going to say const fetch planets is equal to an asynchronous function. And we're going to use the await keyword inside here. First of all, I'll say const response is equal to fetch. We'll use the fetch API to grab the data and we need to pass in an endpoint right here to get that data. So I'm going to grab that from Swappy right here and we want this endpoint which is for the planets. We don't include that one because that would get us one planet. We want a list of planets. So I'm going to paste that in here as a string and just add in the colon and double forward slash. Okay, so this right here is going to go out and grab the data, but it's asynchronous. It returns a promise. And I want to wait until that promise is resolved before I assign the result to this variable. So I'm going to use the await keyword to do that. So that's how async and await works. Because we've marked this as an asynchronous function, we can use the await keyword to wait until this is complete before we assign the result right here. So now we have that we can do something with it. So when we use the fetch API right here to grab data, we need to use the JSON method on the response to access the data from that response. And I'm going to return that. So I'm going to say return the response.json and that gets us the data. Okay, now this is also asynchronous in nature. It returns a promise. So right here, we're specifying that this is the function that's going to go out and get that data. Now, use query is going to manage all of this fetching under the hood. It's going to call this for us initially to grab the data, but then later on, it's also going to cache the data and refetch the data in the background when it needs to do so. So it's going to manage that for us. We don't need to manually call this later. So from this, we can extract two different things here. We can get the data, which is the result of this thing right here, and also a status. And that's the status of the query. Is it loading? Is there an error? Is it a success? That kind of thing. So first of all, let's log this to the console and see what it looks like. Console.log data and save that. And then over here in the browser, let's open up the console. And if I refresh, we can see this data logged out to the console several times. And that's because of the component reloading, but it's only actually ever fetched once. We're not fetching it four times. So if I go to the network tab and limit this to just fetch requests, I'm going to refresh and we can see just one fetch request to this endpoint. It only ever does that once, even though in the console we log it out four times. Okay. So now we have this data right here and we can use that to map through the different results that we get. Now, if we take a look at one of these things, you can see right here we have the results and there's 10 of them. Now, the count property on this says there's 60, but it only sends us 10 at a time. And it says right here to get the next lot, we use this endpoint. We specify a page right here as a query parameter. So we'll do that later on. For now, let's just stick with the first 10 that we get. Now, I said also that we have this status thing right here. So let's output this in the DOM. Let's just say we want a p tag right here, and then we're going to output the status 
right here as well. So remember, the status is the status of the query. If I save this and return over here, you see straight away initially it was loading while it fetched the data, but then it's success once we have the data. If I refresh, you'll see that again quickly. It's very quick, so you're only gonna see it for a split second, but you did see it loading initially. Now, if there's an error, so for example, if I add something else to this, like a D at the end, that's not a valid endpoint. So it can't fetch the data using that endpoint. It should error and the status should show an error as well, but it will try to fetch this three times before it shows an error over here. But once it fails after those three times, eventually we will see the error status. And there it is. So we have this error right here. So at that point, we could display an error message to the user. So what we really want to do is check the status inside our template and output may be a different thing dependent on the status. If it's loading, we could show a loader or say something like data loading. If there's an error, we could show an error message. And if we have the data, then we want to output the data. That makes sense, right? So let me first of all comment out the status right here. And instead, let's do a few different checks. So the way we're gonna do this is by using the logical and operator for each one of these. So let me just write this out, then I'm gonna explain it. So we're gonna evaluate the status first of all, and we're gonna see if that is equal to the error. So this is the error case, right? And then we're gonna use logical and right here and then do a bit of template inside parentheses. So this template is just gonna be a div right here that says error fetching data, okay? So now how does this work? Well, this right here is gonna to evaluate to either true or false. And this template on the other side of the logical and is only ever gonna be output if this is true. So if this on the left is true, then we see this. Now, it's only gonna therefore output if we have an error, right? Does that make sense? So we can do the same thing for loading and success. So let me copy this and above that, I'm gonna do the loading one. So is status equal to loading? If it is, then we'll just output loading data. So loading data dot dot dot. And below that, we want another one as well. And this is gonna be the actual data. So once we have the data and the status is success, ta -da, then we want to actually use that data and output it to the DOM. Now, remember, if we take a look at this data over here, then, oops, we need to update this endpoint again. So it is valid, save it. And if we take a look at this data, remember the actual data is in this results property and this is an array of data. So we want to cycle through this results property and output the data for each one of these. So let's use a map method to do this. And again, if any of this is over your head, maybe check out my earlier React tutorials. The playlist to those are down below, just to brush up your knowledge in React first of all, because I am moving quite quickly over this, assuming you already understand the basics of React and outputting data. So anyway, now we'll have a div and, oops, not a sieve, we want a div. And inside that div, we want to map through the data and output a bit of template for each one of those different planets that we get back. So we want to take the data, first of all, then we want the results property on that, and then we want to map through those. So this fires a function for each one of these, and then we can return a bit of template for each item as well. So in that function, we take the planet that we're currently iterating. So that's going to be the first then the second then the third, etc. And we could just, if we wanted to return a div for each one. And inside this div, we could just output the planet name, for example. So planet dot name like so. Now, if we check this out in the browser, then we can see all of the names of those planets. Now it's telling us to add a key prop and that's when we cycle through data and output a bit of template for each item of data. We need to assign a key prop to each one of these different elements so that React can keep track of them. Now we're not gonna apply it to this because instead we're gonna create a custom component instead of outputting the template right here. So for each planet, we'll have a planet component. So new file and planet.js over here. And inside this, I'm just gonna paste this in because I don't wanna bore you in creating a React component from scratch. But all we're doing is importing React. 
Then we have the planet component. We're grabbing this planet property from the props, which we're going to pass through to that. And that is going to be this thing right here, the individual planet we're iterating. And then inside we have a bit of a template. We have a div with a class of card, which we're going to style up later. Then we have an H3 for the planet name. And then we have the population of the planet and the terrain of the planet. And these are all properties on the data that we can use if we take a look. Inside here, each planet has a name. It also has a terrain, which we use, and also a population right here, okay? So now we have this component and we're exporting it. Now we can import it into planets up here. Let me do that. Import planet from dot forward slash, the same directory, and we want the planet component. And so down here now, for each item, we can use the planet component. So planet like so. Now remember, we need to pass through as a prop the individual planet, so we'll do that. Planet is equal to planet, and also each one of these, remember, needs a key, so React doesn't complain. So the key is also going to be the planet.name because that is unique for each planet. Okay, so now let's see if this works. So let me zoom over here, and now we can see all of the planets right here output to the DOM right looks good we have the name the population and the terrain over here as well so first of all let's just style this thing up a little bit remember we added a class of card to this so i'm just gonna style up that card so to do that let me go to index.css and come to the bottom and paste in three different rules we have the card itself some padding a background margin and border radius the paragraph tag inside that, and also the H3, which is gonna be yellow. So if I save that and come back over here, that looks a little bit better. So that's nice. Now, React Query is doing all of this for us under the hood. We're using it to, first of all, fetch the planets using this function. Then once it has those, it gives us the data. But in the meantime, it also gives us the status so that we only output once we have the data and we can output something else dependent on that status. So once we have that data, we're then cycling through it and outputting each planet in the DOM. So now we just need to quickly do the same kind of thing, but this time for the people instead. Now, instead of writing all of this out from scratch, I'm going to copy this dude and paste it over here like so. And now I just need to replace a few things. So first of all, anywhere where we have planets, I need to replace that with people. So this and this and I think that's it and also this right here we'll call people and we want to fetch people not planets this time and the same goes for this people now the end point for this is just people like so and I think if we go down do we have any more okay let's change the title back to people and down here we also want to map through the data but this time we're taking each person and also we need to create a person component. So let's do that. New file and person.js. And again, I'm gonna copy and paste this from my GitHub repo. So right here, we import React. We have the person component. We're gonna take in the individual person. We have a class of card on this div. I'll put the name, the gender, and the birth year of that person. So this is all data we get back from that endpoint. So now instead of importing the planet right here, we want to import the person instead. And we want to output that person component down here. And this right here needs to be the person name and this and this needs to be person instead. So we're passing through the person prop and that is the value we get right here. So now, fingers crossed, this should all work. I've probably made a mistake somewhere along the line, but we're on planets originally. If I go to people, we see loading very quickly, then we get the people. Planets, people. Now notice this, the second time that we go to these and the subsequent times that we go to these, we're not seeing the loading message, and that's because we're using cached data. But in the background, React Query and the Use Query hook is refetching the data just to see if there's any update. And if there is an update, we would show the updated data instead. So it's always going to stay in sync. But we're using this cached data so we have a better user experience until we perform that check. Now, when it performs that check, there's no need to update the data because it's always the same. But if there was a change, it would update it for us. So that's a really nice user experience. If we refresh 
the app though and then try to fetch these again we will see the loading message very quickly so it has to fetch it the first time because we don't have it initially so that's the basics of the use query hook right there to manage our asynchronous data but react query can do a lot more than just this and we're going to see some of the things later on but first of all in the next video we're going to look at something called the query dev tools and also a bit of config that we can pass through to this hook